In our daily life, we come across many sorts of things. Have you ever wondered what all this is called? And how can we classify them? In this video, let us understand our surroundings. Each and everything which is present around us is called matter. And yes, we can classify them. Matter is classified as pure substance and mixture. Now, can you tell me what you mean by pure substances? Yes, pure substances are substances that are made up of only one kind of particle and have a fixed or constant structure. Let us take a few examples, which we see around us to understand pure substances. Say, you have an iron block and glucose. Both are pure substances, but is there any difference between them? To answer this question, let us see their chemical composition first. An iron block is made up of only iron, or Fe atoms, while glucose is made by a chemical combination of carbon, hydrogen, as well as oxygen. Thus, we classify iron under elements, while glucose is a compound. The element is further divided into metal, metalloid, and nonmetal. On the other hand, compounds are divided into ionic and covalent compounds. Next type of matter which we must discuss is mixture. It is further divided into homogeneous, and the other is a heterogeneous mixture. All true solutions and alloys come under homogeneous mixtures. At the same time, Colloids and suspensions are categorized under the heterogeneous mixture. Now let us further analyze pure substances. So, the first one which we must see is the element. Elements are made up of only one type of atom. For example, zinc, silicon, and sulfur. As we already know, Elements are further divided into metals, metalloids, and nonmetals. Let us first study metals. If we see their properties, then we can say that they are sonorous. They are hard, the exceptions being sodium and potassium, which can be easily cut through a knife. They are ductile and malleable. They are good conductors of electricity and heat. Next, they usually have a high melting point. But few metals have a low melting point, for example, mercury, gallium, and cesium. Then they have a luster. While non-metals have low tensile strength, thus, they don't possess the property of malleability. Instead, they are brittle. And are not ductile. Non-metals are poor conductors of electricity except for the allotrope of carbon graphite. Non-metals are not lustrous which means they are not shiny and are instead dull in appearance, except for iodine. Nonmetals are not sonorous. Nonmetals are usually soft. Exception diamond. Lastly, metalloids typically look like metals. However, these elements often behave like nonmetals. Physically, metalloids are brittle, somewhat shiny substances that are usually solid at ambient temperatures. These elements usually have intermediate to fairly strong electrical conductivity. Chemically, these elements usually act as nonmetals in a relatively weak manner. These elements can form metallic alloys. The next type of pure substances is compounds. Can you recollect the different types of compounds we have? Yes, it is of two types of compounds, which are ionic compound and covalent compound. Do you know what an ionic compound is? Ionic compounds are the ones that are formed by ionic interaction between the particles. These ions are formed by the transfer of outermost electrons from one element to another. Due to the strong interaction which exists between these charged particles, all of the ionic compounds exist in the solid state at room temperature. Most of the ionic compounds show solubility in water. Also, in the molten state, or aqueous solution, they conduct electricity. 
The next type of compound is a covalent compound. Now, can you guess the type of bonds found in covalent compounds? Covalent bonds are present in them. Now, is it formed? Covalent bonds are formed by sharing the outermost electron between two atoms. Now, let us move on to the properties of the covalent compounds. They exist in all three forms at room temperature, depending on the level of interaction they have. Based on their nature, they are soluble in either polar or nonpolar solvents. Next thing to discuss is the mixture. It is the second type of matter that we must understand. In contrast to pure substances, mixtures contain more than one type of component that is not chemically combined. The concentration of the homogeneous mixture is consistent throughout. For example, an alloy. On the other hand, a heterogeneous mixture is the one having a non-uniform distribution. Further, heterogeneous mixture is divided into two types, colloid and suspension. For example, milk, which is a colloid, while paint is an example of a suspension. So, in this video, we came across different types of matter in detail.